Carnotaurus is a genus of theropod dinosaur that lived in South America during the late Cretaceous period, probably sometime between 71 and 69 million years ago. The only species is Carnotaurus sastri. Known from a single well-preserved skeleton, this is one of the best understood theropods from the southern hemisphere. The skeleton, found in 1984, was uncovered in the Shubat province of Argentina from rocks of the La Colonia formation. Carnotaurus is a derived member of the Abelisauridae, a group of large theropods that occupied the large predatorial niche in the southern landmasses of Gondwana during the late Cretaceous. Carnotaurus was a lightly built bipedal predator, measuring 7.5 to 8 meters or 24.6 to 26.2 feet in length and weighing 1.3 to 2.1 metric tons. As a theropod, Carnotaurus was highly specialized and distinctive. It had thick horns above the eyes, a feature unseen in all other carnivorous dinosaurs, and a very deep skull sitting on a muscular neck. Carnotaurus was further characterized by small vestigial forelimbs and long slender hind limbs. The skeleton is preserved with an extensive skin impression, showing a mosaic of small, non-overlapping scales approximately 5 mm in diameter. The mosaic was interrupted by large bumps that line the sides of the animal, and there are no hints of feathers. The distinctive horns and the muscular neck may have been used in fighting conspecifics. Rivalring individuals may have possibly combated each other with quick head blows, by slow pushes with the upper sides of their skulls, or by ramming each other head on, using their horns as shock absorbers. The feeding habits of Carnotaurus remain unclear. Some studies suggested the animal was able to hunt down very large prey such as sauropods while other studies found it preyed mainly on relatively small animals. Its brain cavity suggests an acute sense of smell. Carnotaurus was probably well adapted for running and was possibly one of the fastest large theropods. Another interesting and distinguishing feature of Carnotaurus was its eyes. The eyes of the Carnotaurus faced forward rather than to the sides as most dinosaurs of the time. It's thought that this characteristic may have given Carnotaurus binocular-like vision, although some speculate that hearing and sight were less well-developed. The only skeleton was unearthed in 1984 by an expedition led by Argentinian paleontologist Jose Bonaparte. The peculiar spiny sauropod Amargosaurus was also recovered during this expedition. The skeleton is well-preserved and articulated, still connected together, with only the posterior two-thirds of the tail, much of the lower leg, and the hind feet being destroyed by weathering. The skeleton belonged to an adult individual, as indicated by the fused sutures in the brain case. It was found lying on its right side, showing a typical death pose with the neck bent back over the torso. The skeleton was collected on a farm named Poco Sastre in Shubat province, Argentina. In 1985, Bonaparte published a note presenting Carnotaurus sastri as a new genus and species, briefly describing the skull and lower jaw. The generic name Carnotaurus is derived from the Latin carno meaning flesh and taurus meaning bull, and can be translated as meat-eating bull, an allusion to the animal's bull-like horns. A comprehensive description of the whole skeleton followed in 1990. After Abelosaurus, Carnotaurus was the second member of the family Abelosauridae that was discovered. For years, it was by far the best understood member of its family, and also the best understood theropod from the southern hemisphere. It was not until the 21st century that similar, well-preserved Abelosaurides were described, including Acosaurus, Majungasaurus, and Scorpiovenator allowing scientists to reevaluate certain aspects of the anatomy of Carnotaurus. The most notably odd aspect of this dinosaur's body is its arms, which were comically small, even more diminutive than the legendary tiny arms of the T-Rex. Despite having relatively developed radius and ulna bones in the lower arm, the four-fingered hands were miniature and weak, 
and likely unable to serve any real purpose. However, this isn't all that uncommon. Throughout the Cretaceous period, larger dinosaurs showed a gradual reduction in the size and functionality of their arms. Most paleontologists believe the Carnotaurus arms either had recently become vestigial or was quickly moving in that direction. The skull, measuring 59.6 centimeters or 23.5 inches in length, was proportionately shorter and deeper than in any other large carnivorous dinosaur. The snout was moderately broad, not as tapering as seen in the more basal theropods like Ceratosaurus, and the jaws were curved upwards. A prominent pair of horns protruded obliquely above the eyes. These horns, formed by the frontal bones, were thick and cone-shaped, internally solid, somewhat vertically flattened in cross-section, and measured 15 centimeters or 5.9 inches in length. Bonaparte, in 1990, suggested that these horns would probably have formed the bony cores of much longer keratinous sheaths. Carnotaurus had scaly skin with no feathers. Paleontologists looked at the skin from the shoulders, belly, and tail regions of Carnotaurus sastri. The scaly skin of this abelisauride is the most completely preserved of any theropod, and the only example of this form of integument known outside of Tetanure, excluding footprints. The skin consists of medium to large, 2 to 6.5 centimeter in diameter, conical feature scales, surrounded by a network of low and small, less than 1.4 centimeter, non-imbricating basement scales, separated by narrow interstitial tissue. Unlike more recent discoveries of feathered dinosaurs, particularly from China, Carnotaurus sastri was entirely scaly, with no evidence of feathers. As an active predator, the authors suggest the scales would have been important in regulating the animal's body temperature, as they do in modern reptiles. Given the presumed active lifestyle of Conotaurus sastri and the necessity of shedding excess heat, particularly at large body sizes, over 1,000 kilograms, it is speculated that the skin may have played a vital role in thermoregulation a role consistent with integument function in extant mammals and reptiles. The presence of a large muscular tail combined with the frontal characteristics of the Carnotaurus, such as large head, small and frail arm structures, suggest that the tail of the animal acted as a means of balance, helping to keep the dinosaur upright while walking and running. Its muscular back legs, combined with the balancing power of its heavy tail, allowed the Carnotaurus to reach incredible speeds. Its speed, combined with the weight and strength of its horned head, would have made Carnotaurus a formidable predator. It is presumed that Carnotaurus was a swift runner, arguing that the thigh bone was adapted to withstand high bending moments while running. The ability of an animal's leg to withstand those forces limits its top speed. The running adaptations of Carnotaurus would have been better than those of a human, although not nearly as good as those of an ostrich. Scientists calculate that Carnotaurus had a top speed of up to 48 to 56 kilometers, or 30 to 35 miles per hour. In dinosaurs, the most important locomotor muscle was located in the tail. This muscle was called the caudufemoralis. In the tail vertebrae of Carnotaurus, the caudal ribs did not protrude horizontally or T-shaped, but were angled against the vertical axis of the vertebrae, forming a V. This would have provided additional space for a caudufemoralis muscle, which is larger than in any other theropod. The muscle mass was calculated at 111 to 137 kilograms, or 245 to 302 pounds per leg. Carnotaurus is the only known carnivorous bipedal animal with a pair of horns on the frontal bone. The use of these horns is not entirely clear, but several interpretations have revolved around use in fighting conspecifics or in killing prey. Though a use in display for courtship or recognition of members of the same species is possible as well. Greg Scott Paul proposed that the horns were budding weapons and that the small orbita would have minimized the possibility of hurting the eyes while fighting. Gerardo Mazeta and colleagues suggested that the Carnotaurus used its horns in a way similar to rams. 
The shortness of the skull might have made head movements quicker by reducing the moment of inertia, while the muscular neck would have allowed strong head blows. An enhanced rigidity and strength of the spinal column may have evolved to withstand shocks conducted by the head and neck. Other studies suggest that rivaling Carnotaurus did not deliver rapid head blows, but pushed slowly against each other with the upper sides of their skulls. Gerardo Mazeda and colleagues in 2009 argued that the horns may have been a device for the distribution of compression forces without damage to the brain. This is supported by the flattened upper sides of the horns, the strongly fused bones of the top of the skull, and the inability of the skull to survive rapid head blows. The horns might have also been used to injure or kill small prey. Though horn cores are blunt, they may have had a similar form to modern bovid horns if there was a keratinous covering. However, this would be the only reported example of horns being used as hunting weapons in animals. Paleontologists in 2019 used a CT scan to study the endocranial cavity that contained the brain. The volume of the endocranial cavity was 168.8 centimeters cubed, although the brain would have only filled a fraction of this space. The authors used two different brain size estimates, assuming a brain size of 50% and 37% of the endocranial cavity respectively. This results in a reptile encephalization quotient, a measure of intelligence, larger than that of the related Majungasaurus, but smaller than in Tyrannosaurids. The pineal gland, which produces hormones, might have been smaller than in other abelosaurids, as indicated by low dural expansion, a space on top of the forebrain in which the pineal gland is thought to have been located. The olfactory bulbs, which house the sense of smell, were large, while the optic lobes, which were responsible for sight, were relatively small. This indicates that the sense of smell might have been better developed than the sense of sight, while the opposite is the case in modern birds. The front end of the olfactory tracts and bulbs were curved downwards, a feature only shared by Indosaurus. In other abelosaurids, these structures were oriented horizontally. As hypothesized, this downward curvature, together with the large size of the bulbs, might indicate that Carnotaurus relied more on the sense of smell than other abelosaurids. Hearing might have been poorly developed in Carnotaurus and other abelosaurids, as indicated by the short legena of the inner ear. The hearing range was estimated to be below 3,000 hertz. Like other dinosaurs, the Carnotaurus hatched from eggs laid in twig nests buried underground to protect them from predators. The incubation period for these eggs was around two to three months, after which they were hatched. Experts believe that Carnotaurus hatchlings, like other theropods, were covered in downy feathers to help regulate their temperature. They relied solely on their mothers for food and protection during this period. As the Carnotaurus grew, it went through several stages of development. As a juvenile, the Carnotaurus was more independent and began exploring its environment. It was also at this stage, experts believe, it started to develop its distinctive horns. At this stage, Carnotaurus would have begun to devise its hunting skills. It would have learned to hunt smaller prey, like lizards and mammals. As it grew, it would have become more adept at hunting larger game, such as other dinosaurs. The Carnotaurus was ready to mate and reproduce by the time it reached adulthood, and males are believed to have competed for the attention of females by engaging in fierce battles to exert dominance. When a male won the fight and right to mate, he would approach the female and engage in courtship behavior. The Carnotaurus also likely had internal fertilization, which means that the male's sperm would have fertilized the female's eggs inside her body. The female then laid her eggs in a nest, and the cycle would begin again. Although there is no precise way of knowing their lifespan, some estimates suggest that this dinosaur lived as long as 25 years. They also believe that this time frame varied depending on access to food and predation. The Carnotaurus probably frequently interacted with different herbivorous dinosaurs in the ancient environment. Large herbivores like the Saltosaurus and the Argentiniosaurus would have been confronted and hunted by it as a top predator. 
Since the Carnotaurus relied mostly on herbivores for nourishment, these interactions were essential to its existence. This predator-prey connection was crucial in keeping the environment in balance and guaranteeing the survival of both species. Although being a powerful predator, the Carnotaurus lived in a habitat alongside other large carnivorous dinosaurs. One of these kinds of dinosaurs was the Gigantosaurus, a huge predator that also preyed on herbivorous dinosaurs. Although sharing comparable ecological niches, the two dinosaurs probably diverged in their preferred prey and hunting methods, which lessened direct rivalry. Nonetheless, occasionally territorial disputes and conflicts may have occurred, particularly when resources were in short supply. Interactions between the Carnotaurus and other predators were not limited to hunting. The Carnotaurus, like many carnivorous dinosaurs, probably ate corpses that had been left behind by other predators or by natural disasters. When hunting was difficult or ineffective, scavenging offered a substitute food source. Sharing a corpse may result in occasional fights with other scavengers, including smaller theropods or opportunistic animals like the scavenger dinosaur known as the Majungasaurus. This dinosaur likely also went after flying reptiles that dominated the Mesozoic skies. There is a possibility that the Carnotaurus occasionally targeted these aerial creatures, preying on smaller therosaurs that ventured too close to the ground. Such interactions may have been rare, but they demonstrate the intricate connections between different groups of prehistoric creatures. Although scientists are unsure how this species went extinct, the popular belief is it went extinct at the same time as other non-avian dinosaurs that lived in South America. The most widely accepted theory for the extinction of this species is a massive asteroid impact that occurred near the Yucatan Peninsula in what is now Mexico that led to the death of the dinosaurs and many other species.